Okay, so the next step is to choose the Fill tool, which is right below the Highlighter tool. And then you click inside the outlined area, and it fills the area with this blue-purple color, telling Photoshop that this is the area that needs to be retained. Then click Preview. This will preview the extraction or the cutout that these settings produced. You can pan around to see how the edges were created using these options. If some of these areas dropped out, you can see how they would reproduce by choosing a mat in the display option. If you think that it really needs to be nailed the first time, you can click on Show Highlight and redo that part by using the eraser tool or by choosing the option key held down when working with the highlighter. This will allow you to perhaps make the outline a little bit tighter or looser as the case might be. Again, I'm holding down the Option key on the keyboard, which lets me erase part of the highlighted area so that I can redo it with other settings. And then, to go back, you'll choose the Fill tool, fill the area to be retained, click Preview, make the changes that you need, and then click OK. If you're discouraged by the amounts of data that have dropped out, don't be, because I have a few tricks up my sleeve. The first thing to do to try and get all the pieces, or at least some of the pieces that dropped out, is to duplicate the layer by typing Command or Control J. That in itself will retain some of the areas that dropped out, magically almost. And then I'll merge the layer below by typing Command or Control E. The next step is to use the History Brush, and I'll open the History Palette. We're going to set the source for the History Brush to a previous state before the extraction, and then paint back some of the details. It's really sneaky, but it works just fine most of the time. I'm going to go ahead and choose a brush that's sized right, so something a little under 40 pixels. And I'll set the hardness to 100% so I don't paint in any soft edges. Then I like to click in the places that dropped out rather than drag to fill in. I leave in the edges that are hard to deal with because I can finish them off in the final composite by cloning from surrounding areas like grass or a fence or whatever it is that I'm going to be compositing this cat against. Okay, in the interest of speed, I'm going to stop right here and then I'm going to switch back to the Layers palette. I'm going to drag a copy of this layer right to the top, and I'm going to set this against different backgrounds. Here, I might use the Clone Stamp tool with the Sample All Layers option checked and try to duplicate parts of the background so it hides these areas that didn't turn out quite so nicely. The last thing I would do to unify both these pictures is to apply a photo filter on top to tint the artwork with a common hue. To do that, I'll choose Photo Filter from the Adjustment Layer list, making sure that it sits at the top of the layer stack right above all the layers below. And go ahead and choose one of the options to suit the artwork. You might even darken the background or blur it 
to set the correct depth of field to make this composite look a little bit more realistic.